the touch of your anointing There's no curse that can stay So let my praises move the heavens In every song that I sing Be a herald for your presence Make my life an offering You can have it all
To the Lord don't try to say you know what I want to see it first open up your mind open up your heart and your spirit and God is gonna touch you tonight hallelujah Lord I thank you Lord Jesus I thank you for being in the midst of this tabernacle tonight I thank you Lord Jesus for taking control of this church Lord hallelujah control of this this service tonight Lord Lord you touch your people Lord you speak to them tonight you touch them Lord Jesus and I thank you Lord I magnify you in the name of Jesus I pray hallelujah let's clap our hands unto the Lord as we magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord
magnify him tonight hallelujah i don't know about you but there's joy in the house tonight there's victory in this place tonight hallelujah if you came expecting out of your spirit god's going to give it to you tonight i believe you're going to receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah who's ready to receive a miracle tonight who's ready to receive a financial breakthrough who's ready to receive the jesus that i know hallelujah if you're in a situation god's gonna take it out god's gonna take care of it hallelujah 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 won't you clap your hands one more time in the name of jesus hallelujah oh glory to god the power of the holy ghost is in this place tonight I don't know about you, but you better buckle up and get ready because the Holy Ghost is coming after you. If you're living in a place that you know, Lord, I need an answer. Lord, I need something that, uh, to activate my faith. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, Jesus is coming your way. Hallelujah. So you better be ready. Hallelujah. Because there's an expectation in the spirit that there's going to be a miracle in this house tonight. Hallelujah. How many believe that in the house today? Can anybody agree with me hallelujah i believe that god's gonna do it tonight hallelujah 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 oh glory to god thank you new life for being here on a sunday night you better watch out it's electric god is in this place tonight and he's gonna do something wonderful in this house thank you for those that are online tonight logging in and watching the service i pray that the holy ghost will touch you in your living room wherever you're at and watching online thank you jesus hallelujah won't you reach to somebody shake their hands and tell them i'm glad you're in the house of the lord glory to god and there's a guest here won't you shake their hands and welcome them to new life worship center
to God. Hallelujah. As you work your way back to your seat, if the ushers can come at this time, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. Remember to be faithful with your tithe and offering. God does bless people. Hallelujah. That faithfully give. Glory to God. I'm going to go through a, a few announcements. We're going to do them real quick. And we're going to get to the service. Hallelujah. I cannot wait to hear the word of God tonight. I believe that there's a power of the Holy Ghost in this place. So we cannot delay. God wants to do something in this house. Remember midweek service, 630 prayer, 7 o'clock service. Kids uh, class is also available at that time. So remember 630. It starts at 630. We come here, we pray, and we get our minds right, our hearts right. And we want God to touch us. During the week, we can go through some things. But when you come in here with that same thing, you're not going to receive anything. But when you come in, pray to God, Lord, I need this world off of me and I need the garment of praise put on. God is going to do something. So at 6.30 prayer, 7 o'clock is when service starts. So please don't be late. Everyone, please be here at 6.30. Every last Sunday of the month, it's Kids Live Church at 4.30 p.m. We have a great program from our kids' life. Uh, please uh, bring them. They're going to have fun. They're going to enjoy it. They have curriculum. They have all kinds of activities, and God is touching every child. There, there's one that got the Holy Ghost. I believe there's other many that got the Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about. It's about children getting the Holy Ghost and understanding Jesus. Hallelujah. All church prayer and fasting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. here at the church. Last week was a powerful uh, prayer meeting. We had God in the midst of uh, delivering somebody, getting filled of the Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about. It's about people coming and getting a word from God and being filled of the Holy Ghost. Come on Tuesday night. We pray every day, Sunday to Monday. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean you just come on Tuesday and pray. We fast and pray, and we're praying for people to come and be saved. Hallelujah. We want this baptistry over here behind me to be moved every every service. And we need somebody in the, in the front of this altar to be filled of the Holy Ghost. That's what we're praying for. We're praying to further the gospel as well in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So 7 o'clock p.m., Tuesday nights, prayer and fasting. Fast at the time you get up until the time you eat dinner. That's when we fast. Uh, so please do that in the name of Jesus. Kids Life Burrito Blast pickups will be ready immediately after service. So if you bought some burritos for Kids Life, they're already uh, cooking. You can smell the good uh, food that has been cooked over there. God is going to richly bless us, hallelujah, with a burrito. Glory to God. For those that did not pre-order, we have a few extras for sale. Tables will be set out and come enjoy fellowship with your church family. And thank you for supporting Kids Life. Glory to God. This is for the conference and they're raising money for the conference. So we can't wait till next year for Kids Life Conference. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe it's conference. They're going to do a, a, a rally here, aren't they? Something like that. So uh, I, they're, they're just raising money for that. They're trying to do things for your kids. So please bring them. Glory to God. And they'll have some fun. Kids, uh, kids Life Easter uh, event donations are due March 24th. For more information, please see, see Sister Angie and the Kids Life team. So if you need more information, they have all the information. They have a booth out there. So please go buy that and help them out. This is for Easter. March 31st is Easter Sunday service. I cannot wait because Pastor is going to be here and he's going to preach a dynamic uh, message to us that he's going to also preach to the guests that you're going to invite here on Easter Sunday night. Hallelujah. Everybody does it in the morning, but it doesn't mean that it stops in the afternoon. It continues on and having uh, church all the way on Sunday night. Hallelujah. So invite somebody in the house of the Lord. I'm excited. I cannot wait till uh, March 31st to hear the word of God and those that are going to get changed. Their lives are going to get changed. I cannot wait in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So who's excited for March 31st, Easter Sunday? Hallelujah. Who's going to invite somebody in the house of the Lord and bring them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, it's time to enroll for Rooted Bible Study. Enrollment will end March 26th. 
Classes will begin April 2nd at 8 p.m. Facebook Live. So be ready for that. There's a sign-up sheet at the foyer. Please go over there, sign up. That way pastor knows who's going to be logging in. Glory to God. And I want to say uh, this is a, a, a man of God that I really admire and I really love. And he's part of the board. It is uh, Brother Anthony Sasania's birthday this week. Hallelujah. So Brother Anthony glory to God 22 young glory to God he's still out there working happy birthday brother Anthony we appreciate you we love you we thank you for all that you do hallelujah so if anybody after church tell him happy birthday before he leaves and give him a wish happy birthday hallelujah please accompany your child to the restroom thank you so much for those that have been uh, leading their children into the restroom we thank you so much for that just continue on doing that and that way we can protect our our our, our things for other conferences we ne you never know there may be a conference here from other churches they may come and use our facility. So we want to make sure we keep that up. Uh, if you want to be baptized, please connect with the Pimentails. They're back in the back uh, on your right back there. Just connect with them and they'll tell you what to do. And if you want this great church that we love to worship and praise and dance, if you want to be uh, this home, this your local home, we will love you for you to connect. There's a QR code that's up here and also in the foyer. You can scan that, put your information. We'll love to contact you and let you know that we love to have you as a member of New Life Worship Center, the best church in Tulare, California, in Central Valley. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for being here tonight. That's all the message today. Hallelujah. We bring Brother Gutierrez up, Reverend Gutierrez, and he's going to uh, pray over the offering tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and stand real quick. I want to remind you to be faithful with your tithe and your offering this season right now. I know everyone got taxes, and I don't care if you got $40 back or $8,000 back. Remember to be faithful to the house of the Lord, but also faithful with your giving. Um, it is those, faith, those, those things of uh, being faithful is what we allow us to operate. But also for greater things. God will open opportunities for you in many different ways that you never thought possible because he goes, how can he trust you with bigger things if he can't even trust you with the little things? And so the more and more you show the Lord that, hey, I can be trustworthy, the more and more God will relinquish into your hands. And it really truly is, that's how it works. That's how when you unlock the power of giving. There is no secret formula. There is no magic way to do it is just continually being faithful Amen. being trustworthy in the eyes of God uh, if you have, if you need a tithing or offering, or offering envelope these men on the side can do it they can help you uh, member of your giving if you're right now online you can give also via Venmo you can look up the church and give that way uh, either way there's not anything we would not take so just be able to give what you are able to do today and if you like to, let's go ahead and bow our heads real quick and we'll pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you once again to be able to come into your presence. Lord, God, I thank you for these people today. I thank you for the fruit, the first fruits that you have given them, Lord, today. The opportunity that they have to come into your presence, to know you, to experience you, to worship and fellowship in your mighty name, Lord God. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you bring healing and favor into their lives in a mighty way, Lord God. You see every need that is in this house today. And I pray that your hand would be over it and your protection today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We give you honor and glory today. In Jesus' name. The ushers may serve God's people at this time.
Come on, why don't you begin to lift up your hands to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Come on, they just sung, not my will, but thy will be done. Come on, they just sing about the kingdom of heaven and how powerful the name of Jesus is. We ought to be excited for what God is doing in this place. We ought to be excited about the blood of Jesus and what he did on Calvary. We ought to be excited about the name of Jesus and how powerful it is. It breaks every chain. I said every chain has to break at the name of Jesus. Every tongue will confess and every knee will bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. God has been too good to us, new life. I said God has been way too good for us to just sit down and be quiet. For just to sit down and let the Spirit of God pass you by and jump on to the next person that's next to you. God has been too good, new life. I understand that we may be going through some hard times today, but I said God is still good. I want to thank Pastor and his family for allowing me to come up here and to preach the Word of God. I don't take it lightly being up here. This is not a walk in the park or it's not about me, but it's about God. It's not about me or about anybody here. It's about God. At the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. I want to thank God for all the ministry team. And I want to have a special thank you to Elder Diaz and his wife. They're the elders in my life. I thank God for them. Just the other night, we had them over for dinner and they poured into us, into me and my wife. And there's no, no more beautiful thing than to have an elder come and sit at your table and just pour into you in your own home. It almost brought a refreshing in my spirit. It brought a refreshing in my spirit to have them there. I felt things begin to change in my house. And I want to thank God for them. And I want to give honor to my wife, my beautiful wife. I want to give honor to her because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. She pushes me to go even further. She helps me out. She truly is my other half. And I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for my wife today. Thank God for my wife. I believe that God is going to do something tonight. I came with a heart of expectancy. I believe that chains are going to break tonight. I believe some of you that came in today with some addictions, God is about to deliver you here tonight. I can feel a Holy Ghost boldness moving in the front of this area today. And I'm going to preach to you whatever God placed on my heart tonight. I'm going to give the word just how God gave it to me. I said, God, I'm not after the minds of the people, but I'm after the hearts. I'm after the hearts of the people. Amen. If you guys would open up your Bibles tonight and turn to the book of Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. And I'm going to read it from a slightly different translation. But God's still going to move. I'll give you guys some time. And I feel the Holy Ghost up here right now. So strongly. Oh, Jesus. Whatever the Lord poured into me, it's going to get poured out into you today. If that is the case... Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O King. He will deliver us from your hand, 
O King. So if you guys would please close your Bibles tonight and then help me pray tonight. Lord, I pray today, God, God, that you would speak through me today, God, that you would anoint me, God, from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet, oh God. God, I pray, God, that you would help me to reach the hearts of your people tonight, Lord. God, I pray, God, that things would begin to shift, God, in the atmosphere here tonight, Lord. I pray today, oh God, that I'm not here to hype the people up, Lord, but I'm here, God, to reach some hearts, oh God, that they don't come in the same, but they leave out different, that they would leave out the church building different, God. I pray today, oh God, that you would have your way, God. And I pray, Lord, that your word, God, would fall on good ground today, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray today you may be seated tonight. As I was reading the book of Daniel, chapter 3, God gave me a title. And the title of my message tonight is pain, I mean, is purpose in the pain there is purpose in your pain this is the title of my message here tonight and as I was reading in the book of Daniel chapter 3 I began to pray and I began to say God I've already heard this story many many times and God began to speak to me and he said you've heard it but other people haven't there is somebody that needs to get revelation about the fiery furnace here tonight. I believe that the hand of God is upon the people of God today. I believe that God wants to do great works in each and every one of your lives. But as I was reading today, as I was reading, I read that Nebuchadnezzar commanded everybody to bow down and to worship a golden image. And he said, if you do not bow down, there would be, you would be thrown into a fiery furnace. So he threatened the people, if you do not bow down and worship the image, you would be thrown into a fiery furnace. Immediately, people began to fear fearful. I said, immediately, people began to feel fear. And they said, well, I'm going to do what that man is telling me to do. And I said, and, and so I began to read but there were three Hebrew boys that stood up and refused to bow down to a golden image I said the three Hebrew boys refused to say I refuse to bow down and worship something else other than my God I'm not gonna bow down to entertainment I'm not gonna bow down to an, a, a drug addiction I said I'm not gonna bow down to gossiping and lying I'm not gonna bow down to the things of this world but I'm gonna stand up for the things of God I said I'm gonna stand up to the things of God amen so they began to so they said I refuse to bow down and so they stood up for what they believe in and because they they stood up for what they believed in they were cast into a fiery furnace and I can only imagine what they began to feel. I can only imagine that they begin to question God and say, God, why? Why, God, am I going to... I'm standing up for what I believed in, God. But I'm going to get thrown into a fiery furnace. Oh, but they were so full of faith. If that was me, I probably would have. If we're real tonight, I probably would have been like, God, I stood up for you, Lord. But you know what? They were full of faith and full of power that they said, you know what? I'm going to trust God through the process. Amen. They're going to trust God through the process. And as they get, as they were thrown into the fire, Elder Diaz, the Bible says that their clothes were not even burned. The Bible says that they, when they were out, they didn't even smell like smoke. 
Oh, that there was nothing that showed evidence showing that they were burned. But, they, but Nebuchadnezzar was mad and he turned up that fiery furnace seven times hotter. Oh, I can only imagine. He's like, man, why isn't anything happening? Why is anything happening to them? But Nebuchadnezzar, he looked into the fiery furnace and he said, didn't I send three men? Why is there a fourth man in the fire? Come on. Come on, new life. I said, he said, oh, Jesus. Jesus, I see a fourth man in that fire tonight. Hallelujah. And so, and so as I begin to read, God's like, that God was like, I was with them because they were so full of faith through the fire of trials. Oh, I can only imagine new life that you, when you're going through some trials and if you have faith, believing that God is with you, the world would see that there's a fourth man in the fire. Come on. And as I began to read and I continue to read, Oh, he was mad. He was angry. He said, the fourth one looks like the son of God. <coughs> and when they came out there, there was, there was smoke. And the king, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and the crowd was astonished. When they came out, there was no smoke. They didn't smell like anything. They didn't even look like they were burned. But when they came out, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was so astonished. The crowds looked at him. Why were they not burnt in the fire? What was protecting them? I can only imagine the questions that they began to think. Did I just witness a miracle before my eyes? Come on, new life. If you can see stay encouraged tonight and if you can stay encouraged through your trials here tonight you will realize that there is a purpose in your pain tonight <clears throat> and as I begin to read I see it in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 28. It said, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who his, angel, who his, uh, his angel delivered his servants whom, uh, whom they trust. Amen who trust in him if you can trust God here tonight through your trials new life you would see that that you would be untouchable that the fire of trials of life will not take you down I understand that when you're going through some things if you're not careful new life through the pain through the process of pain if you're not careful you will see that the enemy would try to tempt you with throwing in the towel the enemy would try to when you begin to feel discouraged it's like a crack that opens up where the enemy tries to come in like a roaring lion seeking who he, who he may devour come on you life and he's trying to come in and he will try to put thoughts in your head you would begin to think why you would begin to think why is God doing that to me elder why is God allowing me to go through what I'm going through you begin to question man this brother and that brother they didn't even message me when I was going through some stuff if you're not careful new life through the pain process you ought to begin to allow the enemy to plant seeds in your mind but we do not fight oh we do not fight in flesh but we fight in the spirit new life I'm not against my brother I am with my brother in one mind and one accord come on new life and if you in the name of Jesus so we have to be careful. We have to be careful when we're going through the pain process. We have to be careful because if we don't and we're in the fiery furnace, we may get distracted and get burnt. You may get distracted through your trials. And you would feel, you would feel the actual pain of your trial. And I believe that the hand of God is on you today. And somebody here came today with some heavy baggages. Somebody here tonight came with some chains and some addictions. But I believe that God's going to turn it all around for you. And I also believe here tonight that somebody is in a dark place tonight. God began to speak to me the other night. And I was saying, God, 
What do you want me to talk to the people about? What do you want me to preach, Lord? Help me to deliver your word, God. There's somebody that needs to hear something. And there's that, that's why it's very important that we spend time in prayer, Elder. We spend time in the word. And we also spend time in fasting. I heard, I, I read this one day. That fasting puts legs on your prayer. There's going to be times that when you pray, you're like, man, God's not hearing me. Start fasting. Start fasting. Start digging deeper. And you'll see God begin to move on your behalf. So if we're not careful through the pain, we can get distracted with other things. We may start going to different places start doing different things, Elder Diaz, and we begin to drift away from the things of God slowly. See, the enemy is not going to just come in and rah, scare you. The enemy is going to try to creep in through things that you like. And you see, I'm not going to preach to you here tonight something that I have not been through. I'm preaching to you something that I've been through, new life. But I caught it at the nick of time. And my God had his hand upon my family. I said my God had his hand upon my family. New life. So there's purpose in your pain. And God, and God will have your way. God have your way. See new life. If we're going through some trials and some pain. God never said it was going to be a walk in the park. He never said it was going to be easy. He never said that you're never going to go through anything. But you know what? He understands the things you go through. How is God ever going to, how is the revelation of God will never leave you nor forsake you? Uh, how will you ever get that revelation if you never go through anything? You heard what I said? How are you ever going to get the revelation of God's promises if you never go through anything? If, if, if everything's so good, then I don't need God. Am I right? If everything is so good, then you wouldn't need God. But you know what? I thank you, Jesus, for the trials. I said, I thank you, Jesus, for what I'm going through. I thank you, Jesus, God, that I've been going through some dark times and some valleys, oh God, because I know it's just a season. I said, I know it's just a season. It ain't always gonna be that way, new life. Let me encourage you tonight. It ain't always gonna be that way. Haram we gotta be like a David that says I'm gonna encourage myself when nobody else is around me I'm gonna encourage myself when there ain't nobody around me oh God you're still good God you're still faithful I said God you're still faithful oh Jesus why don't you begin to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords come on you life give a hand clap to God God. Let God be God in your life tonight. If we're not careful during dark seasons in your life, during dark times in your life, if you're not careful, you can either run away from God or run to God. And I would rather run to the king. I would have rather run to him than to run away from him. I'm going to run to the source that can help me. I'm going to run to the source that can help me, Elder Diaz, who's going to lift me up and say, son, I'm with you. I said, son, I'm with you. Oh, hold my hand, son. I'm going to walk you through this fire. I'm going to be with you just like I was with Nisha. Oh, come on, with the three Hebrew boys. Come on. Jesus, hallelujah. I thank God for what God is doing. Jesus told us that pain is suffering and suffering are a part of our lives. In John 16, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, and in the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen? 
He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. If the Lord went through it, why do you think that you're not going to go through it? Oh, if he was made fun of, why do you think you're not going to get made fun of when you're at work? Oh, when you're around other people and they say, man, I don't want to be around that Christian right there. He's too holy. I don't want to be around. Man, don't take it offensively. Why don't you begin to say, thank you, Jesus. I'm different. Thank you, Jesus. I'm set apart. I am not like the world, God. You brought me out of the world God and into your marvelous light Lord Jesus come on oh Jesus there's also gonna be times new life that we're gonna have to go through some things in order for God to use us about a couple months ago I still remember this I was at work and my boss came up to me and and she said hey You need to fix this on your car record um, because if you don't, you're going to lose your job. And I was like, okay. I I, I started fearing. I started getting scared. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to lose my job. And then God instantly checked me. He goes, don't you trust me? Can you take correction from God when he would check your spirit? All right, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, God, for getting out of line and being distracted with other things. But I said, Lord, I trust you. Okay, God. I trust that whatever happens, God, you're going to turn it around. I'm not going to let fear take over me, elder. But I'm going to conquer that giant. I am going to knock it down just like David. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus. So I said, all right. And at that time, I was living in Dinuba. And I had to drive all the way to Visalia to the DNV. And so I, I went, I fixed whatever I needed to fix. And as I was driving back with my wife, we seen this gentleman who was standing on the corner uh, in downtown. And I, I passed by him and I seen him with his head down and he had a sign. And, and uh, you know, he was a homeless man and he was just sitting down with his head down. And, and I was just like, man, it looks like a dark cloud is over that man. And I was like, all right. Well, I was going to go by and I was just going to give him some money, Brother Jesse. You know, and I went around once and it was a one way out there. I went around once. It was a green light. I couldn't even stop. So I went back around. I tried it again. This time there was a cop and I couldn't stop. (laughs) I couldn't stop. There was a cop, man. So I just I went around again. And this time I was like, you know what? I'm going to follow the rules and I'm just going to go park in the parking lot and get off. So I did that. And I said, praise God. I was like, all right. And my wife's like, why don't you give him something and give him something to drink? And I was like, all right. And I thank God for my wife being sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. And so I went and I got off and I said, God, use me. I don't want to just give him food and money. God, use me. Use me for this gentleman, God. He may be going through something, Brother Jesse. Oh, but I said, God, use me. And I got off, and this gentleman, he was just sitting down, Elder Diaz. Oh, he was sitting down with his head down. He just looked miserable, like a, like, a, like a dark cloud was over him. And I said, hey, brother, come here. I was like, hey, brother, come here, man. Let me talk to you real quick. And then he's all, he just looked at me. He's all right. Like, he looked so happy. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, can I pray for you? And this guy, he just began, he was so froze, man. And he said, you know what? Can I tell you something before you do anything? Can I tell you something? He said, I've been standing here all day in this corner. Not one person has stopped to give me money, to give me food, or to even pray or do anything for me. He said, I've been standing here all day. And I just, I'm not going to lie to you. He said, I don't know who you are. He said, but I'm not going to lie to you. I've been going through suicidal thoughts. I've been going through some depression. And I was literally just about to kill myself and jump off the bridge. And I said, my God, what it is to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. What it is to be sensitive to the Spirit of God out there. This gentleman was about to kill himself. He was about to throw himself down the bridge. And... And he said, but you gave me hope. He said, you asked if you can pray for me. 
instead of giving me money and food you said can I pray for you he said thank you he said what church do you go to and I told him he said I'm a backslider he said I used to go to church he said but I drifted away and I feel so embarrassed to be around you I said don't be embarrassed I said because God sent me here to tell you that he still has a plan for your life that God still wants to do something in your life that it is not too late oh tonight is your night and so I told him I said brother come over here I was like let's pray man and we began to pray and the Holy Ghost began to move and I said all right God touch this man I started praying against the spirit of suicide I started praying against the spirit of depression elder Diaz I started praying against it and I just seen something transform in this guy's mind he began to look different he began to act different he said brother thank you for praying he said I want to go to church oh I want to go to church I said the church is here the church is here come on oh Jesus and so and so I told this guy I said bro I said here man you have a Bible and he said yeah he said I got a Bible and I said here let me highlight a couple things man I feel like the Lord wants you to read these scriptures and then he goes, man, he goes, God sent you, huh? I said, yeah, absolutely, he did. I said, God did send me here for you, bro. Can you see new life? If I would have fell, if, if I didn't trust God through the pain, and I would have feared for my life, and I would have just caved in, I wouldn't have been able to drive a couple miles down just for somebody that was about to commit suicide. New life, you have to trust God through your process come on there is uh, there is you got you gotta trust them through the pain you gotta trust them when you're feeling the pain it's not meant there to destroy you but it is meant to uplift you and it is meant to take you into further places see he is the creator he begins to mold you he begins to he begins to smooth out those rough edges there's some branches that may not need to be there oh but god will cut them off i said but god will cut them off come on new life you gotta be excited for the things of god oh jesus and jesus hallelujah there's some things that we don't understand there's some things that we may not get full revelation or really understand what god is trying to do but it, like i said if we can just trust him you will begin to see the fourth man in that fiery furnace with you people are watching you they are waiting to see oh what is keeping that man going what is keeping that woman of god going elder diaz what is it that they have when they're going through trials that i don't have and that's where discipleship comes in and you begin to you begin to draw people in that way oh your testimony your character the way you carry yourself come on you life everything is important but in order to get that you must first fall in love with God you want to thrive in the things of God you want to thrive in, in your walk with God well how, how, how do you do it brother Reuben uh, just fall in love with God just fall in love with God and you'll see God begin to take you into different places. You'll begin to, to operate in the supernatural. You'll begin to see God begin to move like he's never moved in your life. Come on, new life. If you can get a hold of what God is trying to do, you'll begin to see things begin to shift. You'll begin to see those addictions begin to break. Oh, those addictions, I know what it's like to be a drug addict. I know what it's like to walk into church and be full, be full of, 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 of just yourself. I was telling other ideas, man, I was, when I was in the world, I was so prideful. I dealt with pride. I dealt with an addiction. And I dealt with rage and anger. And if you've been in that stronghold, you know what I'm talking about. 
but God is here to break some generational curses. It is not going to go to my kid. And I declare that in the spirit realm today. Oh, my kid is not going to deal with anger issues. My kid is not going to deal with pride. Oh, but we're going to be humble, full of love, full of joy. And we're going to rejoice when we're going through something. And I'm going to teach my son, hey, come on. Oh, but dad, there we're going through stuff. It doesn't matter. Why don't you just praise? God oh when I'm going through something I just want to praise you oh God I'm gonna find joy in my suffering come on we gotta find joy in our sufferings new life you have to find the joy when everything is chaotic around you and it's, it's by far one of the hardest things to do but it's not impossible because with God, all things are possible. Amen. And I remember, as I was telling other Diaz, man, I dealt with all this stuff, man. And, and, and when I first came to church, and I first, I, I didn't even want to go to church. I don't, even, I don't know why I feel like I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. I don't know why I'm telling you this. But I didn't want to go to church. I was very fearful. I was thinking, man, I was just going to, you know, turn into this evil demonic thing and go all crazy and burn when I walk into a church, but, but praise God that didn't happen. I was, I, I caught on fire of the Holy Ghost. That's what I got. I got the fire of the Holy Ghost, man. And so when I came in, I was like, you know what, God, I never knew nothing of God. I didn't have, I didn't have people to teach me the things of God. I had family that were involved in witchcraft. I had family that were involved in other things. Oh, but, but it doesn't matter what circumstance I was in and what dark place. Because my God can reach me no matter where I'm at. Come on, some of you got to get a hold of that. There is no place too dark that God cannot reach you. There is no place that is too dark that God cannot reach you. And you know, I share some things with the other deers, but I don't want to share them right now because I'm going to take too much time. But, but I felt the Holy Ghost. Oh, so anyways, I went to church, man. And, and when I stepped foot and somebody kept inviting me and I said, man, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. Oh, but that is a lie from the pits of hell. Oh, the, 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 one of the biggest lies that the enemy will tell you is you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time to get right. You got plenty of, of time to go to church. We're living in such, we're living in, in times where the coming of the Lord is so soon. Brother Andrew, I just seen that the moon is going to become the blood moon. If you guys seen that and all that's prophecy being fulfilled. And I'm telling you, if there is a time that you ought to live for God and get, get right with the Lord, it's today. I'm not here to correct you, but I'm here to encourage you and to challenge your spirit here tonight. If there is a time that we ought to get right out there, it's today. If there's a time that you ought to be sold out for the king, it's today. I, would, I wouldn't choose it. I, would, I, I, would, I love this life that God has given me. Come on, you life. And so when I first went to church, Elder Diaz, I stepped foot. And I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in anything like that. And, and, and I didn't know God. I didn't know the things of God. Oh, but when I walked into that church building, oh, and I just seen the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to move on all kinds of people. Somebody just brought me up to the front. And I began to feel the presence of God for the very first time, Sister Mary. I began to feel the presence of God for the very first time. And I said, you know what? As God began to touch me, tears began to flow. And I began to feel something cleansing me inside. I said, whatever that is, I want more of that. I said, whatever that is, I want more of that. So I began to choose living for God. A lot of people say, oh, well, I found Jesus. Jesus found you in your mess. 
A lot of people go, well, oh, I found Jesus, and then this and that, man. God found you in your mess. Wherever you were at, God found you. He stepped in and he saved you at the nick of time. That's why we don't take things so lightly when it comes to the things of God. Because if it wasn't for God, I would have died in that car crash. If it wasn't for God, I would have been shot and dead. I said if it wasn't for God, I would have been in prison for life. Come on. Some of you know what I'm talking about. If it wasn't for God, I would have overdosed on drugs. I know what it's like to live in that lifestyle. You may see me here tonight with the suit and my hair all done and you think I have it all together and old brother Ruben doesn't go through things but that is a lie from the pits of hell because I don't have it all together. I just love God. Come on. Oh, come on. How many of you tonight would begin to praise and would begin to say, God, I love you. Jesus, I worship you, God. You've been too good to me. You saved me out of the pits of hell, God. Oh, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost here tonight. And I feel like there's some chains that are going to be broken. And I know I may sound like a broken record. Oh, but I'm saying this tonight because I truly feel that things are going to change. Can I tell somebody today that is going through a dark season? It ain't always going to be that way. If you can just trust God through that season, you will see the hand of God like never before. If you are feeling in a dark place tonight, don't give in to the lies of the enemy. I bind every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I said I bind every attack of the enemy over the people of God in the name of Jesus. Come on, new life. You got to get bold in the spirit. You got to get bold in the things of God. Oh, devil, you're not going to take me out. I don't care. You ain't going to take me out. I'm giving my life to God because he's all that I got. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah. How many of you can believe that with me here tonight? That he is all that you have. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, new life. You got to believe that with me here tonight. If that can fuel you tonight, and I'm trying to encourage you out of that dark place. I'm trying to encourage you away from that season. And I'm trying to put hope inside of you tonight that you will make it. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I can feel God moving. I can feel lives being changed tonight. I can feel that things are going to be a little different. Maybe some of you tonight been struggling going in and out. Maybe you've been struggling, oh, trying to live for God, but you don't know how. I'm here to tell you tonight that your first step is falling in love with God. Is falling in love with God. Oh God, I don't want to come into the church building and, and then leave back the same. God forbid that ever happens. I don't want to go back to the things that I was doing before I came into this place. You got to have a God moment like Pastor said. You got to have a God moment where God begins to change you. You might be in church for a while, but you still need a God moment. Come on. Oh, come on. We all need a God moment. We are all struggling with something. We are all struggling in our minds. But we got to be careful, new life, that the enemy won't try to plant a seed. And that seed will begin to sprout. And then eventually, it will take you right out of church. I'm being serious. I ain't preaching to you something I haven't been through. Brother Ruben didn't leave. I still stayed here. But I ain't going to preach to you something I haven't been through. I'm, I'm telling you something out of experience. I know what it's like where the enemy would try to make you think, well, that brother didn't, that brother didn't, uh, uh, he didn't pray for me or 
Maybe he didn't send me an encouraging, an encouraging word or, or I'm going through something and, and, and nobody cares. You begin to feel like that. I'm serious. I know, what, I know the tactics of the enemy. I even studied myself when I was going through this stuff. I began to study my own self. Man, that's crazy. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I ain't going to let that dark season and that, 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 that dark place take my praise. Some of you need to get a hold of that tonight. When you feel so discouraged and you feel like you're all alone, why don't you just go to your room and begin to put some praise music and begin to worship God through your trials. That's how you're going to find the joy. Come on. In Jesus' name. I felt... I, f I feel like God is not through with somebody here tonight. There's somebody in this place tonight that God ain't through with you. You were just walking into that place, that dark season. And the enemy was just about to lie to you. But God had a divine appointment here tonight to help you to get out of that. Oh, come on. There is somebody right now that needs encouragement. There is somebody right now that needs a renewing in their spirit. If there's ever a time that you should get a renewing in your spirit, it's today. If there's a time that you ought to give your life to God, it's today. If there's ever a time that we ought to be serious in our walks with God, it's today. Come on, new life. Come on, new life. Oh, Jesus. God has been too good. God has been too good. I feel the power of God in this place. I'm going to read something to you that the Lord showed me. Finding purpose in the pain requires us to speak and pray God's word. In trying times, we are tempted to grumble, to complain, and to focus on what we don't have. Yes, this is all a part of the healing process. But God doesn't want us to stay there. But he wants us to move forward, to speak and pray God's promises. He wants us to pray and ask for what you need with a thankful heart. This isn't always easy, but he wants you to see what he has already done and brought you through so that you trust him to be faithful every time you're in fiery trials. Man, that's powerful. If that didn't touch you, I don't know what will, man. I trust God through my fiery trials. Do you see how a simple attitude change can get you through something instead of being negative about your pain why don't you begin to be positive and trust God man trust God trust God through the pain God thank you I'm going through that God I, I may feel like everything's just coming coming down on me God but it's all right I love you Jesus I trust what you're doing I trust what you're doing in my life. I trust what you're doing in my mind. I trust what you're doing in my family. I trust everything, God. Even if I don't see my family being saved now, I know that eventually they're going to come to church. Come on. Oh, that hit home for somebody here tonight. Even if you don't see your family coming to God now, you will see them eventually. Oh, but God, when are you going to bring them? It's not your time. It's God's time. It's God's will, not your will. Just like they were singing. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I see my kids just falling away, not caring about the things of God. Oh, I see them being angry. I see them, I see them not caring about prayer or anything like that. It's okay. Do you trust God through your process? Do you trust, man, I'm preaching to myself right now. I'm preaching to myself. Come on. 
In the name of Jesus. I feel like God is moving in this place tonight. And I feel like God is not done with you. I feel like God's going to start turning some situations around. And I don't know why I feel this in my spirit, but I feel like saying this. God has always had his hand upon you. There has to be, there has to be a shifting in your mind where you remember when you're going through some things, just remember, hey, if God can get me out of that, God can get me out of this. If God brought me out of the world and, and he, he saved me from all these real life experience death, then God can save me out of what I'm going through in my mind. Then God can deliver me from my addictions. Come on. Oh, I feel to say this right now. I remember something that keeps me going is I remember I never shared this before. But my great grandma, my great grandma, she was a uh, she was apostolic. Crazy. Just found that out. She was apostolic, man. And 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 she was a faithful woman of God. Mom, my mom just told me all this stuff. And I was like, man, that's awesome. I remember when my great grandma, she was she was, uh, I would see her. I didn't understand the things of God, so I never knew that nobody lived for God in my life. I just, I just knew my grandma was those, you know, people that would talk about God, but I didn't know what she was. She actually had a true relationship with the king, man. And I remember when she was dying on her deathbed, she already had dementia. And she was in Mexico, in, in Tijuana, Mexico. And my mom was telling me, hey, your grandma's about to die. Um, I forgot my passport. Can you and your brother come and bring it? And I said, all right. I was like, it looks like I'm going to Mexico to give that passport to my mom so she come back. So I was like, all right, you know. And I went all, me and my brother went all the way over there. And I'm not kidding you, the whole way over there I was on drugs, man. I was just getting high and everything, all crazy, going all the way over there. I, I thank God I didn't even get pulled over, man. But I went all the way to Mexico. When I got there, I came back. I mean, I got there to my grandma's house, and I see my grandma laying on her deathbed, Elder Diaz. Back in Mexico, man, they, you die in your bed, in your room. And she was right there laying down, and, and, uh, and she was right there laying down, man. And, and I was just like, man, she, was, she had dementia. She didn't remember anybody. She didn't remember my mom. She didn't remember her own kids. She didn't remember anybody. But I walked into that room, and then all of a sudden, I started crying because I seen my grandma dying. And... And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and she began to cry with tears of joy. And I was like, I was telling my mom, she remembers me. She didn't remember my brother, but she remembered me. And she stuck her hand out like this, and I grabbed her hand, and I just began to cry because I was like, man, she remembered me. Well, I gave my life to the Lord. I started living for God. And Elder Diaz, I began to pray and I asked God, God, what did that mean? My grandma lived for God. I was like, what did that mean, God? And she told me, she told me, she goes, hey. I mean, he told me, he goes, hey. He goes, remember that day? Your grandma has always prayed for somebody in her family to live for him, for me. She always prayed for somebody in my family to give their life to God. And I revealed it to your grandma before she died. Because she died the next day. That next morning she died. But before she died, God revealed it to her that it was going to start with me. I said, oh, Jesus. He said, I kept your grandma's promise. He said, I kept her promise. That I, I, I kept the promise. That promise that I gave to her, I'm going to save somebody. I'm going to change somebody's life. And right before she died, it was me that she showed. That's why she remembered me. Man, that is crazy. So to, to those of you right now that have been praying for a family member, or maybe you feel like God hasn't answered your prayer, don't give up. Don't give up because God is not done. I said God will keep his promises. If God gave you a promise, he's going to keep it.
If he gave you a dream that your family was going to be saved, then God is about to just do just that. But like I said, it's not your timing. It's God's timing. Come on, you life. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. And I just felt to end this here tonight. I think I passed my time. Um, but I, feel, I, I just feel to end this here tonight. So if you guys would please stand. And I'm just going to simply pray. This is not altar call, but I'm just going to pray for you guys. We have to trust God through. We have, you got to remember that there's, there's purpose in your pain. And we have to trust God through that pain. It's not always going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park, but it's very well rewarding. See, the road to life is narrow, but the road to damnation is wide. So many people are heading down that path. So many people are heading down that wide path. But there's only a few dedicated people that are really heading down that narrow road. And I choose to be on that narrow road. No matter how, how bumpy it really is. Or how scary it may look. Oh, I may see a cliff down there. Or I may see that there's a snake or something around me. But I'm going to trust the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, he's going to guide me. One time, I had a dream that I was walking down this narrow road with my... Uh, a narrow path with my family. And I was holding them all by the hand like this, Elder Diaz, me, my wife, and my two boys. I was holding them like this. I was like, follow me. Oh, look, watch out, there's a rock. Come on, let's go, let's go. And, and I seen my physical father in front of me. And I was following him, and he was telling me. I, I just seen him get a stick, and he goes like this, boom, into a rock. And then he pulls out a big old snake. He goes, this was about to bite you. He's all, but I killed it for you. And when I woke up, I prayed and I asked God, God, what does that mean? He goes, when you're in that narrow path, a lot of people think it's going to be easy, but it's not. There's going to be things that are going to try to take you out. There's going to be things that are going to try to tempt you to just really take you out, out of that, 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 um, that path. But I will be there to be ahead of you, and I will clear the path for you. Amen? Let's pray, new life. I'm taking too much time. Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, new life. Lift up your hands right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, God, for New Life Worship Center, God. I pray for all the saints, God, of new life. But I also pray for every visitor, God, that you would touch every heart and every mind, God, that there would be a life-changing experience, oh God, that would begin to happen in their lives, oh God. I pray, oh God, that something would begin to transpire, oh God. God, I pray, God, that they would really get a hold of it, oh God. God, that when they're going through some fiery furnaces, oh God, that they're going to trust you, oh God. That the people around them are going to see the fourth man in the fire, oh God. Oh God, and the enemy will try to tell me, oh, well, what about this and what about that, God? I trust you, Lord. I'm going to silence every voice, God, that's not of yours, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, new life. Don't just listen to that knock. 
you have to be sensitive enough to be curious to see who is at the door. Because guess what? We've all opened the door for the enemy way too many times. But today, tonight, we have to open that door to the Lord and allow him to do what he has been trying to do for so many years in our lives. There is purpose in your pain, he said. There is purpose in your pain. In the beginning of service, Brother Jose kept on, he was stuck on marriage. I pray for marriage, I pray for marriage. How many of you love your wife and love your husband? But let me tell you something right now. There is even something greater than that physical marriage that was shared together, one with another. But there is a spiritual marriage that the bride and the groom, he is waiting for you to prepare yourself for you today. The Lord is on your side. In the book of Exodus, in chapter 2, in verse 11, the Bible reads this. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that when he went out, his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian, smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian, and he hid him in the sand. And when he went out a second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him, That did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me? And thou killest the Egyptian. And Moses feared. And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Surely this thing is known. Lord, I ask you, God, one more time, Lord. I ask you, God, one more time, God, that you would speak to our spirit right now. I feel a boldness on side of me right now in my spirit. I feel the authority of the Word of God that is penetrating in this place today. I feel like Brother Reuben has followed the Holy Ghost, and he has surely allowed the Holy Ghost to minister in this place. If you would preach with me right now, I'd ask that you sit down. And let's just see where God will go with this. Let's just see where God will go with this. Brother Reuben, thank you for being sensitive. Thank you for being sensitive enough to trust the Holy Ghost. Thank you for maturity. Thank you for acknowledging the Word of God in your life and being transparent enough to share it with us in our life. 
Because that is the only way that we truly can find discipleship and find the person to be a mentor into our lives. And guess what? The, the, the world is trying to, to lead the people in the ways of wickedness. And they're trying to lead the people to the pits of hell. But thank God for men such as yourself that would consecrate themselves. And I know it's not easy. I know. But thank God for men like yourself to be able to get into that place and to trust God with the word inside of his life and to be walk into humility and say, God, let my life be a reflection of who you are today. Thank you, Brother Reuben. Thank you. In order for us to understand what we just read, we have to go back. And my goal in this place today is to take you back. Take you to a place that you have been running from for a very long time. Amen. I want to take you to that place. In the book of Exodus, in chapter 1, in verse 8, this is what the Bible says. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, and when they knew not Joseph, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of, of, the, people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we come and let us deal wisely. Let's be smart, he's saying. Let's, be, let's deal wisely with them. Least they multiply, least they grow. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they grieved because of the children of Israel. We have to go back. You see, nobody wants to go to the place where you first committed your sin. Nobody wants to go back to the place of embarrassment. Nobody wants to go back to the place of humility. Nobody wants to go back there. But tonight we have to. We have to go back to that place. Because I sat there and I wrestled and I wrestled. And Brother Reuben said it. I, I counted like 15 times. Tonight the chains are going to be broken. Tonight, the chains are going to be broken. And you see, we come every week, every month, all year long. We sit in the same pew. We do the same thing over and over and over. And it's become a routine. It is traditional. No longer is it authentic. No longer is it sincere. But we know how to do it. It's like getting up every day, you roll out of bed, you go, you brush your teeth, you comb your hair, you get ready for the day, you make sure you look good, and you leave with humility. You leave with fear. You leave with doubt. You leave with anxiety. You leave with depression. You leave with the weight of the world on you. And not one time do you stop to ask God, God, would you enter into this day with me? Not one time will you stop to ask God, Lord, will you cover me from the wiles? Will you cover me from the things of the enemy that is going to come against me today? Because let me tell you, walking on that narrow road like Brother Reuben said, it's not easy, folks. I am a witness. I look nice. But this fleshly body, it took a whooping. But I had to stay on that narrow path. Why? Because I felt like I've tried everything already. I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried that twice. And it never worked. You've tried it twice. You're probably still willing to try it again. But what you haven't wholeheartedly 
have tried is letting go of the wheel. Letting go of the wheel. And say, God, your will, not my will. Your will, not my will. You see, Moses, as a child, his mother had to hide him. His mother had to hide him for the simple fact that there was a king that wanted to be rid of all of the little boys. And the reason was because he knew that they had purpose. He just wasn't sure which one it was. He wasn't sure which one had the purpose. So instead, he says, let's just be safe. Kill all of the boys that are two, at the age of two years and younger. Kill them all. Search the city and find them all. For months and for months, this woman, three months to be exact, this woman, she healed her child. She hid him. I was thinking about it, and God was showing me. He was saying, can you just imagine the way that this mother would try to find ways to hide this child when the Roman soldiers or the people were coming? How could she? Would she shove him under the bed? Would she hide him in, in, in a dark corner? She would hide him. She would try to, to make sure that he was safe. I'm sure if anybody, any woman in this house today that is a mother, that has a child, that you would protect that child with everything that is inside of you. If you knew that somebody was going to come and try to harm them and try to hurt them, you would do everything in your power to make sure. The other day when, when Pastor brought your daughter up here, and he did this and he was doing that. I didn't watch him. I watched you. And I watched you cry because it was real for you. Because you were knowing that you wouldn't do anything that you didn't have to do to protect that child. You would protect her with your life. You see, we're going to hit the nail on the head tonight. We're going to hit the nail on the head tonight. Moses began to get too loud at times. <laughs> crying the, cl the, 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 the calls were getting too close when they would come to check the house they, they're at the door it was getting too close I could only imagine that that woman that she was even beginning to be fearful for her own life because had they found that she was hiding this child what would they do to her for going against the very people that were searching for her child. They would probably bring her out and humiliate her in front of the city and kill her and make an example of them. Don't you ever cross us. You see, that's the way the enemy wants to work. He wants to put fear inside of us and make us feel like we have no authority, we have no way out, we have no abilities. He wants to make sure that he cuts that off and for too long, we've been living like that. You still have choices. You have opportunities. Still today, right now, I have not heard the trumpet. And I have not seen anybody be lifted up. So right now, you are still walking under grace. You still have the mercy of God to be able to do the things that are right and start choosing God for your life. You see... He, he hit it. We didn't share notes. We didn't call each other. We didn't ask God, hey, can you tell him to tell me what he's going to... No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. The way it works is that you have to spend time with God and in your Bible, and the Holy Ghost will take over after that. You see, I'm sure Brother Reuben could have preached the whole service all by himself. But you see, this service, God has a plan. This service, God has purpose. Right now, he has purpose. He said, in verse 15, he says, Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. 
And he sat down by a whale. Listen here. Now the priests of Midian and seven da- had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their, fo- their, their father's flocks. And the shepherds came down and drove them away. But Moses, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flocks. And when they came to rule their father, he said, how is it that you come so soon today? And he said, an Egyptian, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherd and also drew water enough for us and watered the flocks. He says, and he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is he that you have left a man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was, was content with dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zepporah, his daughter. And he bare him a son. And he called his name Gruesome. And he said, I have been a stranger in the land. You see, if we open our Bibles and we, we begin to read the word of God, it will begin to make sense. This didn't happen from one day to the next. This, this account, it took some time. There were some years that went. You see, remember, he killed the Egyptian man. He killed the taskmaster. He killed him. Moses did. Why did he kill him? He killed him because, you see, Moses was a, a young boy, born of a Hebrew, but he was raised by the Egyptians. Pharaoh's daughter. We're going to school tonight. And he said this. He said this. He grew up there with them. He had the the luxury things. He had the majestic things. He had all the great things in life. He grew up as a prince in that kingdom. But one thing he knew was he was different. It didn't matter how much makeup you put on him. It didn't matter how much jewelry you dressed him up. It did not matter how much stuff you tried to put on him. You could not change who he was. He was part of a plan. He was part of a plan. When he came out, the Bible says that he seen his brethren. He saw his people is what it's saying. His people. He looked around. He looked this way. Why did he look around? Sometimes people do things that are wrong, and they try to make a right out of it. But I'm here to tell you that you cannot right a wrong, right a right with a wrong. You cannot do wrong to to do right. Even though he was standing up for what was right, Even though he was standing up for his people, it was still not right for him to smite this Egyptian man. It was not right for him to take the 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 job of killing this man and punishing this man on his own. It was not his, it was not his job. Vengeance is mine, is what the Lord says. Not yours, not mine, it's God's. So let God be God and let God judge the people for what the people do to you and I. Let God intervene. Okay? So I said it. It was a course of time. This whole time Moses was running and he was hiding in the wilderness. Years have gone by and he's still hiding. How long have you tried to fit in with people in places that you knew you just felt so uncomfortable with? Man, I hope they don't find out. Man, I hope they don't see it. Tuck it in just enough. Let me hide it. You see, Moses was running from his sin. Moses was running from the very thing that God wanted to take him back to. Watch this. Chapter 3, verse 2. He says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, pay attention, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. 
And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses, two times. And he said, here I am. And I'm almost assuming that he had to call him twice because this great thing that he was witnessing, he's never seen anything such as the bush was not consumed. He doesn't want to look, but, but let alone God is calling him. There's a lot of times that you and I don't want to look, but God is calling us. He says, and he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Amen. Watch this, watch this. This place right here, this place, this right here, this is the line. Why do we invite you to this place? It's because this place is holy ground. Amen. He's saying, take off your sandals. Don't walk up here with your filth. Don't bring your sin in this place. Come up here when you're ready to leave an offering, a sacrificial offering, which is your sin. This place you come here because this place is holy. But a lot of times we've become so callous in our skin that we can't come to this place and just allow God to minister to us because we come and we bring our filth and we bring our junk and we never take our shoes off. We never take the time. God, forgive me. Touch my mind. Touch my heart. God, I'm asking you to search me through and through. God, renew me. Cleanse me. This is before church. This is before church. Because when you walk through those doors, God will already know, oh, I know him. Why? Because when he called you, you heard him. And guess what? You allow the humility to come in to say, hey, you know what? I know who I am. I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. And the truth of the matter is, is a lot of times you can't fall into that place where you need to be because you can't come into that holy place because your sin will keep you from coming to the power where the Holy Ghost can move and deliver you. This place. Guess what? This place is even greater than that place. Brother Andrew said it the other night. We are held accountable Two times more. And it's so easy to take that lightly. My son wants to come and play the drums. My son's been going through highway through hell. But guess what? To get to that place, to get to this place, to get to that place, there's a process. Take off your shoes. Take off your sandals. Reveal your sin to God. Because God knows who we are. He sees us for who we are. He sees right through the clothes. He sees through the tie. He sees through all of that. He sees through all the beautiful homes, the beautiful cars. He sees through all of that. When will we begin to take off the things that are weighing us down? Watch, 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 watch. Moreover, he said, I am, okay, he says, moreover, he said, I am God of thy father and God of Abraham and God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction, not just their affliction, your affliction. Of my people which are in Egypt, you're in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, by their beatings, by their whippings, by their oppressions. And I know their sorrows. 
I know their sorrows. He knows their sorrows. And I am come down to what? To deliver, to break the chains. Okay? To deliver. Them out of the hand of the Egyptian, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large unto a land of flowing with milk and honey, unto a place, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come up unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. You see, what he's saying is, he's telling Moses, I hear their cries. I hear their pain. I hear their sorrows. I hear the infirmities. I hear them. Self-included. I cry out to God all the time. My family goes to sleep. My son Matthew hears me cry out to God every night. And the reason that I do that is because God called me out of my life of filthiness that I can probably pave the path for my children. Paving a path is not easy. When God calls your name, it's, it's, it's not easy. Everybody wants God to call him. But don't nobody want to do what God is asking him to. You see, there's a process to this thing. You have to live a life that is separated. You have to live a life that is holy. You have to live a life that is different from everybody else. Swatch. Verse 11, he says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Watch this. And he said, Certainly I, God, will be with thee, you. And this shall be a token unto you, unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Okay, we had a visitation. God met him at the bush. We had a conversation in the same place that he met him. A lot of us are having too many visitations without conversations. We're letting God meet us where we are. And God is waiting for us to talk back. Because he called him twice, most likely because he wasn't listening or he was afraid to listen. He hid his face, it said. How many of us are still hiding our face? How many of us are refusing to have the conversation with God that he wants to have? Because it is through you that maybe somebody in your family may be saved. Because God wants to call you so that he can send you. You see how that works? He called Moses only to send him back to the very place that he was running from. And none of us want to go back to that place of sin. Nobody wants to go back to that place of humility. Nobody wants to go back to that place of embarrassment. Nobody. But I, myself, I go back there every day. And the reason is, is because I want to remember everything that God brought me out of. You see, those people, those, those people that were tending to the field, they said that Egyptian, he came and he helped us. He lived under the Egyptian way for so long, he still looked like them. After all these years, but guess what? He didn't act like them. 
Can you imagine those Egyptians with all their gold and all their pearls and all their makeup and looking all fancy? Can you, can you imagine them coming out and saying, no, no, let me fetch that water for you. No, 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 let, let, let me do this for you. Let me feed the sheep. No, no, no. Yeah, right. That's like seeing a, a beautiful woman come down and crawl down on, on her knees, you know, all dressed up and all decked out. You know how long it takes them to get dressed? It's not going to happen. That's right. That's the truth of it. In your lane. He's in your lane. He's in your lane. You see, the revelation of this is, Moses said, who am I? I am nobody. I am a tool in the shed. That's all we are. And from time to time, he will pick up Elder Diaz and say, today I'm going to use him. From time to time, he will grab Brother Jose and say, you know what, I'm going to trim the trees with him. Today, he used Brother Reuben, and he worked the grass as good as he could. At times, he grabs Brother Andrew, and he says, we're going to blow all this filth away. And tonight, God wants to use me to tell you, it's time for you to go back to that place. It's time to go back to that place. That place where God visits you. And it's time for you to start having that conversation. Do you know how rude it is to sit with somebody and talk their ear off and they not say one word? So you've experienced it. And the truth is, is that, is that God has been waiting patiently for us. He visits us every day. Every day he visits us. And we never say a word. The revelation is, is your family will die in sin. If you don't go back to that place and deal with the past, the things that have been trailing you and holding you down, the things that have been oppressing you. Because, you see, the Bible says that those taskmasters, they're the ones that were doing the oppression. They're the ones that were doing the abuse. They were the ones that were whooping and beating on the, on the people, on God's people. But today, this world, this world is beating down on you. We have to stop letting this world whoop us. Amen. That's right. It is time that we, as people of God, men and women of God, stand up for who we are called to be. Amen. And say, you know what, God? As long as you go back with me, I will go. I know that I killed that man. I hope they didn't find his body. But yes, I hope that you can protect me and cover me. He says, because when you go and take them people and you bring them out, he says, I will be with you. Amen. I will be with you. You have an opportunity here today. Amen. You have an opportunity that you can be delivered from your pain and from your bondage and from your prison that you are living in every day of your life. I mean, men and women of God, I am telling you that there is no way that you cannot tell me that only the world is suffering in prison because I know many Christians today that are going through things right now in their lives and they have imprisoned themselves. But I wanna tell you right now, you need a visitation, you need a conversation, and you need a revelation right now. On this journey of getting to a land of milk and honey that flowed. The people, they bickered and they complained and they whined. A trip that should have took 11 days took 40 years. Why? Because God could hear you bicker. God could hear you crying and sniveling. Oh, how come he can't do it for me? How come he can't do it for my family? How come he can't bless us? How come he can't take us out? How come we can't go on vacation? How come we can't do this? How God is hearing you bicker. And guess what? 
even though they bickered, he still provided water. Even though they whined and complained, he still gave them food. Today, we have an opportunity to bicker and complain or to stand up and say, where's that line for that narrow road? Where's that line for that narrow road? Because I promise you, if you don't answer the door, your family will die in sin. We all want to hear the pretty message. We all want to hear that God is great. But I'm here to tell you that God is just. God is very just. And today, your family is hoping that you will answer the call. Your family is holding on to you right now that you do not give up. Your family is hoping right now that you can last just another day. Because they I feel the Holy Ghost. Because they are hoping, they are hoping that they can tear down their flesh the next time you come to ask them to come with me. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right now. You know, this thing ain't easy. This thing ain't easy. I'm talking about me. It's not easy to do the things that God has asked us to do. But you know what? One way or the other, we will get through this. Because victory is ours. God is trying to get you to a place that is flowing with milk and honey. That's the eternal place, the resting place, the heavenly place. But I want reality to settle in here right now. If you don't answer the door, you will find an eternity place. And you will land in the lake of fire. And the greatest fear today is that we make it just in time. But I'm here to tell you that why would you wait and take the chance of making it in the nick of time when God has given you an opportunity to come back right now? Stand with me. Brother Reuben, come here. I believe that God knows what he's doing. I believe that God knows what he's doing. And he brought us together for a reason. He brought us together for a purpose. And God is perfect in everything that he does. I'm wondering right now if you would go back to that place. Be sensitive enough. Don't worry about who came with you. Don't worry about what it looks like. And just be sensitive enough to take off your sandals right where you are and come up here to the holy place as we pray for you. Brother Reuben, would you help me pray for them right now? Lord, we come before you today, God, and we give you the glory and we give you the honor, Lord. God, we thank you for everything that you have done in this place today, God. But Lord, I pray for the people, Lord, that they will stop and yield, God, to the mouth, God, that they will understand, God, that it doesn't matter the fire, God, that they will be thrown into, God, but that you will go into their with them, God. It doesn't Who will take off your sandals today and come to holy ground? Who will return back to that place of sin and ask God to forgive them? Tonight is your night. 
God brought you here for this reason today. You've allowed the Egyptian taskmasters to beat you down for an eternity. Why won't you allow the tool in the shed that God has chose today to give you a hand up and to pull you right out of that prison, to pull you right out of that bondage and allow the chains to be broken in your life? We pray that these words that have been spoken today, that they have fallen on good ground, that they have penetrated not just your flesh, but that they have went deeper into your spirit. And that not our words, but the word of God, you will stop and yield to today. Thank you. open right now come and listen uh, receive the word from our preachers tonight they gave their heart they gave their mind and their spirit for you to order to come to the altar and be saved tonight hallelujah so come today because god is wanting to do something mighty and miraculous in the name of jesus hallelujah lord i thank you i magnify you lord for the word that we heard lord, lord i want to be right lord I want to live right, Lord Jesus. Lord, I want that visitation, but Lord, I want to communicate to you, Lord, because I'm going through a process, and I know that you're going to handle it all, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it, church. Hallelujah. Pray for somebody tonight. Glory to God. Won't you just come out and just touch somebody? Pray for them right now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. The ministry team's going to come and they're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Glory to God because there's something powerful in this house tonight. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. That's it, church. Hallelujah. Pray for somebody. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There's a miracle in this place, Lord. Lord, I need you to touch me, Lord. I need you to protect me, Lord Jesus. I need you to lead me, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah.